Hi everyone, back in chapter 10, Facial Devices and Technology, and in this section 10-12, we're going to state the benefits and the use of the paraffin wax. So the paraffin wax heaters that allow for direct immersion of a client's hand or foot in the paraffin bath should never ever be used due to concerns of cross-contamination. So back in the day, people would wash their hands with soap and water and then immerse their hand in the paraffin bath, and we don't do that anymore. Now, newer models have been developed since then, and one model, it uses a machine, and what it does is it heats up a little plastic sleeve that's filled with paraffin for single-use um, disposable application. And then you take the paraffin out and then you just put the bag, the hand in the bag. Um, those are, I'll show you a picture of those. Um, this is what they look like. Here, you can see this little machine. It's this copper one. And then you see those two little tabs on the side? Well, that's where it opens. And then what you do, once you open it, let me show you, here's a bag. You can see those little bags and they're filled with paraffin. And then you take those bags and you put them inside of the machine and then you close it. So the machine's like this and it opens up. And then you put the bag inside, it has some little connection. You put the bag in and then the machine closes and it heats up the paraffin. And then when you're ready, once it tells you it's finished, then you just open it up, take the bag out, and then you can dip their hand or their foot in it. So that's a newer machine, and those are, they're kind of spendy. They're about $250, and then the bags, you can get buy a pack of 36 for $189, and the, those prices may be a little more elevated since, um, since this is an older book that I have. But anyway, so that's one way. Another way um, that you use paraffin is with a paraffin bath. And I was going to show you mine, um, but I think one of my kids borrowed it, so I can't find it. So anyway, but um, so that is how you do with a paraffin heater. Um, another way is if you have the bath, you will dump the paraffin into a bowl and then uh, use a disposable brush, and then you can just paint the paraffin on the skin. That's another way, and I'm gonna show you another way from there as well, because um, there is a lot of different ways. So when to use paraffin wax? Well, the warm paraffin mask, it's used for hydrating dry skin. So paraffin, um, what it does is it hydrates the skin, it's also a relaxing result, and you do end up with glowing skin, which I, I love. And a lot of people don't use paraffin anymore, um, but I personally love them for facials. You can use them on hands and feet as well, and they really do hydrate. You'll put a, uh, like a hydrating body lotion on the hands and the feet, and then, of course, you slip them into the paraffin bag. And you can either put electric mitts over the top of that, or they've got just some regular mitts. Um, I'll show you a picture of those. So you can kind of see, these are just the regular mitts right here that you can kind of see. And there's a paraffin bath right there. Um, but again, you never dip your hands or your feet in there because of cross-contamination. But then you just put the little mitts on and, you know, it keeps it warm for a while. Another thing that you can do if you don't have either of those is once the hand is in the bag, then I take hot steam towels and I just wrap it with a hot steam towel. And then once the towel starts to cool, I'll remove it and then pull the paraffin off the hands. That's just another trick that you can do that um, works really well if you don't have those. Even oven mitts, guys, you can even use an oven mitt and stick the hand in one of those too, um, just to keep it warm for a little bit longer. 
Now the paraffin wax, what it does is it allows the esthetician to provide a treatment that offers a very quick result, but um, with hydration and that glowing hydrated skin, it looks really nice, but it only lasts for a limited period of time. So by the next day, um, their hands aren't going to be so hydrated anymore, but or their face. I really like to use them on the face paraffin and it penetrates like a serum or a cream. So instead of a mask, I will put a serum on the face and then I will lay uh, paraffin strips over the face. I'll put cotton rounds over the eyes and then a gauze over that and then I go ahead and I'll paint on uh, paraffin with a disposable brush so like take a disposable brush or even a popsicle size stick or a tongue depressor size and then just get the paraffin on and then lay the disposables over the top of that and it works really really good for a nice hydrating facial so um, but we do need to know the contraindications for the for the paraffin wax so clients who have compromised skin or skin conditions like cuperose or whatever else, um, rosacea, anything that can't tolerate heat, like real sensitive skin, um, that is a contraindication. And um, general health conditions that are not cleared for the use of heat-based modalities um, you don't want to use paraffin and not uh, you don't want to use it over acne either so it's not made for that but it is made for real dry skin or mature skin so I like to use it um, in my facials for like I said really dry skin and it does give this really nice glowing appearance to the skin so let's talk about the safety and the maintenance so these paraffin heaters, they're made to stay warm at a safe, low level of heat all day long. So you can turn them on and leave them on all day. But you have to replenish the paraffin as you discard it from the heater. So you're going to have to constantly be, you know, uh, putting new wax in your heaters. And then these heaters do take a long time to heat up in the morning. So first thing when you get to work, plug in your paraffin heater because they really do take a long time. And I've even tried this before. It doesn't work. I've tried to put the paraffin into a bowl such as this. And then what I do is um, I've stuck it in a microwave and it doesn't. It will not heat it up. So just so you know, if you think of that idea, if you forgot to plug it in, it won't work. So always use a professional wax bath um, machine that emits low heat. I'm going to show you this one that I used to use um, at the school I used to work at years ago. Um, and it was this one right here at the top. And you can see it's got um, different levels for heat. Um, I love this that heater this one right here. I loved it It was so nice because I could adjust the heat on it and um, You could even hit melt and it would heat up really fast and melt the wax if you forgot to turn your heater on and you Realized oh my gosh forgot to turn it on you hit melt and it will go to a really higher heat and melt it and then you can just readjust the levels um, those are pretty spendy. Let's see, this one's about $170. Um, the one I have at home here that I guess one of my kids borrowed. I don't know where it ended up. Um, but anyway, I only paid $30 for it at Bed Bath & Beyond. And it even came with some clear wax. Another thing that you want to remember on the waxes um, if you're using a wax for the hands or the feet, you can go ahead and buy a scented wax for those um, areas or anywhere else like elbows or knees or wherever you need to uh, you know, hydrate the skin. 
but if you're going to use paraffin for the face, always use a clear paraffin um, with no scent added. And those are best for the face. So I used to have two heaters, two of those heaters that I showed you at the other school that I used to um, be the director at the, their aesthetics department. Um, so I got to choose whatever stuff I wanted to use. And I had one for one heater that had like a lavender or a peach or whatever type of paraffin in that. And then I had a clear one too for the face. So they were both going all the time. So depending on what services we were going to do, um, they were ready. So one thing you want to remember too, um, if you're using a bath like that one that I showed you, what you want to do for safety, because you can't dip your hands and feet into there. Um, so what I do is I take a bowl and I just, I didn't have a paraffin bag. So I just went and cut um, like a Ziploc bag just to use that for my demonstration. And then, so you line your bowl with it. And then what you want to do is you take um, like neck strips, but you can buy paraffin strips. They're just like a neck strip, only paraffin strips are a little bit wider. And then you take your neck strip and you dip it into the bowl like this, holding your fingers in the edge. Do not dip your fingers into the paraffin. And then I'm gonna have to set this here to show you. And then I take um, a popsicle stick and then I just hold it here and run this neck strip up. And then once I get it up, I grab it and go like this so the paraffin can drip back down on itself. And then if I'm doing hands, I'll just wrap it like around the thumb. And then I bring it around the hand like this. And I'll do several strips until I kind of like mummify the hand. And you can do the same on feet. You can also use these like around the elbow if their elbows are dry. Um, this is just a tissue that I cut into strips, so it's not long enough. But neck strips are pretty long and you can use those. And so I like to use those anytime I'm using paraffin. Um, also, even on the face, when I have eye pads on and a gauze, I'll take these after I dip them and, you know, run the stick here, like run my stick, you know, and get rid of the excess and then I bring it up and I'll place it like, you know, all over their face, even over the eye pads, just leaving their nose and their mouth open. When you get to the upper lip, I fold it, you know, I'll fold it like this in half and then maybe again, and then I'll just place it like that across the upper lip, but I've already done all the areas of the face and then I do that area last. Um, and it really does make a super nice treatment for the client. Again, you just need to not use it on skin that's cuperose, rosacea, real sensitive and has uh, pustular acne or any acne. So it's made more for dry skin. Um, and so the use of this machine, what this one machine I was telling you about, um, this new one, which is really, really nice, this machine here. So the use of this machine, it does have that little plastic sleeve, these right here, and you just take them and put them inside of there. And then that um, is great for single use applications for the hands and feet. And that does prevent cross contamination. Then after use, depend doesn't matter what machine you use, you want to clean the machine, um, you know, wipe it down again with your leukocyte or barbicide, whatever you have, and then wipe the machine down thoroughly and then follow whatever cleaning directions are supplied by that manufacturer, whatever they say um, to use to clean the machine. Um, but I just wipe mine down. Uh, if there is some excess paraffin on the bath, I just use a popsicle stick and kind of scrape it off of there. And then um, once I get all that off, then I'll go ahead and wipe it with my uh, 
you know, rag sprayed with barbicide and clean it up. Okay, guys, so that concludes this section um, on the paraffin heaters. And there is a check-in question that you're going to need to um, answer. And that is, what method of applying paraffin wax is best for preventing cross-contamination? Okay, and then there, go back through, reread this section. And then there is a do section, and it is paraffin wax case study. So I need you to do that. And then again, send your answers to krista at oliverfinley.com. And I'll see you in the next section.